What's up everyone? Today we're going to be checking out the engineering of the Volumir Aqueduct. This was actually recommended from one of you guys on Discord, so thank you so much for the suggestion here today. Let's check it out. Let's see what we actually have. Don't forget guys, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. We've reached 10k subs. I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much everyone for all the support you guys have given me so far. It took some time, but we made it guys. 10k subs. We made it. So thanks for that. Without further ado, let's get on with it. See what we got guys. Let's get it. Hi everybody. This is the Structures Guy. And today we're discussing the engineering of the Vero Romir Aqueduct. Aqueducts or water bridges are bridges built to carry water streams across gaps such as valleys. Navigable aqueducts, also known as water bridges, are- Wow bro, look at that. How is that even possible? Water bridges, bro. That looks insane. Honestly, that just looks crazy. A bridge structures that carry navigable waterway canals over other rivers, valleys, railways, or roads. If you drive your car under the Veromir Aqueduct, it will pass under an orange bridge, which you might think is built for cars or trains. However, this is no ordinary bridge. Instead of containing a paved road or train tracks, the bridge actually holds a 3 meter deep canal. Okay, that did not notice. 3 meters? That's actually quite big, you know? 3 meter. Oh, that's, that's huge. That allows water and boats to cross from one side to the other. The Veromir Aqueduct is in fact a navigable aqueduct which is used as a transport link for only small boats. The Veromir Aqueduct is an impressive work of architecture and engineering and is located in the eastern Netherlands in the city of Hederwijk, where you can read the name for yourself. Okay. The most boring fact about this aqueduct is that it is the official shortest aqueduct in the world. But bro, just, just look at that view from above. That looks like crazy designs, honestly. That looks insane, man. Insane stuff. Measuring only 25 meters in length by 19 meters in width. Okay. During the design of this exceptional channel, engineers chose to construct the aqueduct over road in three or two, where 28,000 to 34,000 vehicles pass each day. In addition to this easy boating access, pedestrian walkways are on both sides of the aqueducts, allowing for foot traffic along the aqueduct, and there is a walkway below the bridge in the same direction of the roadway. I like to draw bridges that allow for one type of traffic at a time. This aqueduct allows for a constant traffic flow on the roadway and on the water. Okay. Open in 2002, the unique water bridge is still in operation today. During the design process, engineers considered building an underwater tunnel or even a high bridge, but for this specific case, they were both determined to be too expensive and too obstructive to the existing landscape. Also, for both cases, the construction schedule would have taken a longer time than a water bridge. The budget for this project was set to 53 million euros. 53 million euros? Wow, man. Or about 61 million US dollars. That's crazy. That is crazy, man. In 1998, I lasted for about four years. As for the engineering of this project, anchored steel sheet piling was used yeah you can see like the steels like look here and over here that looks like strong stuff so it looks safe to be honest in my opinion to hold back the sediment from the roadway to allow it to dip below the water line this is the same process used to construct temporary coffer dams that are used for underwater construction projects but in this case the sheet piling is permanent. After that, the roadway was constructed and then the bridge deck and the framework poured with four spans of concrete stretching 27 meters. The bridge deck is made of pre-stressed concrete which allow the concrete beams in the bridge deck to hold high loads of not only compression but also tension. Okay. The entire project used 22,000 cubic meters of concrete to support the weight of the water above the roadway. 
as I was doing my research for this video, I was wondering how the road would transfer when a boat traveled over the water bridge. I came to the conclusion that the bridge will not experience any road change when a boat passes over it, and here is why. The principle of Archimedes tells us that a floating object displaces a volume of water that weights the same as the floating object. So, when a boat is passing over the bridge, it adds its own weight, but it displaces water of equal weight. That water would then flow out to the ocean, hmm. given that the water bridge is open-ended, and thus the dead okay. weight the bridge structure will experience is exactly the same if there was a boat on top of the bridge or not. I see. So, where most of us are used to having cars drive over bridges, in the Netherlands, there is an incredibly small bridge filled with water that lets boats sail over a busy highway at all times. Also, as a fun fact, the roadway passing under the Veromir Aqueduct so We've got another road here as well that goes... Okay, that's interesting. To connect the mainland of Netherlands to the largest artificial island in the world with a total size or a total area of 970 square kilometers. Man, that's, that's crazy, video, bro. I learned something from it. Honestly, that video was actually really good. It, that design with the bridge, the water, the water bridge in general, that was, that was crazy. Thank you so much for the suggestion, by the way. I forgot who suggested it. Let me check quickly. Peter J, thank you so much for that video suggestion. And yeah, if you've got video suggestions, guys, join the Discord. We have a suggestion tab, so you can recommend videos for me to react to. And yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace out, guys.